Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Yoke. This is our first episode of 2015. There's uh, quite a few things we could do today. We could talk about 2014, but that's kind of old news now. We could talk about CES, which just came back from there. We could talk about the plans for 2015. But, Jenny, I think you had a different idea, right? So, earlier this week, I uh, introduced the idea to Paul that maybe we should try to join a handbell choir, expand our talents, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, everyone loved it, but they forgot to buy us any bells. <sighs> so... We have uncovered a uh, new way to make music for you. Well, not really new, but let us serenade you with our go. talents. All right, ready? Ready. Here you go. It's good, right? That was Handel's Messiah. The Detroit Auto Show is happening now, and for those of you who will give little care about the wheels turning in Motor City, I ask you this. What if you could 3D print a Shelby Cobra? Would you care then? ORNL is debuting the most unique Cobra ever made. This Cobra, like all kit Cobras, could pass off as genuine. Well, until you do the magnet test. Nevertheless, the uniqueness of this build is that most of its parts, including all of its body panels, were created by a giant 3D printer and then sanded smooth to remove any trace of the filament ridges. Previous 3D printed cars have more closely resembled the rings of a tree or a pile of melting crayons on wheels. Not so here. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities in 3D printed vehicles. Who among you could say, nah, I'm not really that interested in a Gundam, thanks. Or how about passing on printing yourself an iconic Batmobile? Or a DeLorean with replica flux capacitor? ORNL is bridging the gap between automotive fantasy and reality, not by printing any of the fantasy vehicles I've named, but by allowing automotive designers the freedom to build their fantasy vehicles in the form of working prototypes at a previously unheard of rate. The Shelby Cobra was printed, assembled, and painted in six weeks, and that is including the R&D time to test the sanding and painting process on the printed material. Cutting the design to prototype cost and time down will no doubt lead to incredible innovations in automotive design. I say let's have it, because whomever thought up the Nissan Juke could have benefited from a fast redesign process. One thing we all missed out on at CES was a chance to spend some time with Shihira Aiko. Shihira... Shihira Aiko. Shihira Aiko. However that might be pronounced. Shihira Aiko is Toshiba's demonstration of a female doll that can perform services. That didn't quite sound right either. Despite what you're probably thinking, she's actually meant to improve communication and quality of life for people who can't find someone to talk to. They specify that she would be ideal for dementia patients because they would have no idea that they weren't talking to a real person. This seems like a reasonable solution for a country like Japan whose population is shrinking. Roughly 25% of residents are considered elderly. This is the largest population of retired and elderly people in the world. Birth rates continue to decline, and that begs the question, who's going to sit around and actually talk to all these old people? Here in the United States, we don't face quite the same societal issues thanks to our strategic reserve of bingo halls and Coco's restaurants. The robot girl has been called a geisha by many media outlets, and predictably, it seems that the Western world has only one thing on their mind when presented with an anthropomorphic female robot. Can she cook? Among other inventions we missed at CES this year is the Belfie stick. Belfies, or butt selfies, are notoriously hard to take, and though other versions of the Narcissus stick have not really caught on in the US, they are hugely popular in Asian countries, particularly with teenagers. Perhaps we just needed the right kind of selfie stick to capture the selfies we really want to take. Now before you go slamming the Belfie stick, let me say that this could be the tool that launches you into a new, profitable, and highly respected career as a fitness guru. 20-year-old Jen Selter worked at a gym for a little while when she was 18. At that time, she decided to use her Instagram account to inspire people to be fit with a mixture of nauseating, cliched motivational sayings and pics of her booty. Two years later, she is not only still profiting from the Belfie business with 5.1 million followers and counting, but the New York Post gave her a fitness column. She has no formal training, no formal education, no credentials, and no fitness certification of any kind. Just Belfies as proof of her workout concept. I think it's safe to say that a Belfie stick workout DVD will be coming to a $4 bin at your local Walmart in the not-too-distant future. If you are one of the 939 million Android users running the 4.3 KitKat or older OS, your device is a security risk. 
the security software developer Rapid7 has discovered that the older OS can be easily exploited through a bug in WebView, the ad software that is enabled on almost every app available on the Google Play Store. To make matters worse, Google is no longer issuing patches for WebView on these older devices. Thanks, Google. At least you let us know that our devices are now offering safe harbor to any malware that sails in on a new app download. Google is getting some heat on forums and in editorial articles, such as this one that Thomas Fox Brewster wrote for Forbes. In the article, he suggests that Google provide a bit more transparency when it comes to their timelines for ending user support so that customers can plan purchases that will protect them. Google has responded to all this negative press by apologizing profusely and immediately creating a patch to rectify the situation. Wait, no, that's not really accurate. What they did was not respond at all and instead released issue 123, an explanation of a bug in Windows that allows someone to elevate the privileges of a user's profile on Android. This could be very bad in that it could allow a user to impersonate the local system. Microsoft is furious that Google released the issue, and to pour a little bit of salt on the wound, at the bottom of the notice in bold letters, it states that Google gave Microsoft 90 days notice to fix the bug prior, prior to releasing this information. How's that for some deflection? So what do we do now then if we're still on 4.3? Is there some kind of smartphone protection we can buy? Like, Steve? Steve, what do we do? Yeah, Steve? just buy a new phone. Oh. Okay. All right, everybody, that wraps up this, our first episode of Yoke Back for 2015. Thank you all so much for joining us here on New Egg TV. We would be nothing without you. Exactly, Jenny. Uh, I'm so excited about this new year. There's so many possibilities, so many opportunities coming up. Uh, the one thing that I've actually just been really excited about was that I now know what a Belfie is. I awesome. Had no, I saw that at CES, and I was like, I don't, I don't want any part of that. But now I know, and you know who's actually really blowing up on the Belfie scene right now? Who? Kyle. Kyle? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Kyle's Instagram, he just got butt pictures all over it. So check out Kyle's Instagram uh, if you haven't already. And request more Belfies from Kyle, I think. That's what we really need to see more of in this world. We uh, should try to get him sponsored. We should. Sponsored by one of the Belfie stick makers. Yeah, that'd Bluetooth, be excellent. Bluetooth-enabled ones. The other ones are they're stupid. Right. Um, uh, apart from that, though, you guys, uh, we're back to our regular schedule now that uh, CES and the holidays are all over with. So, um, Yoked, of course, on Wednesdays. You're watching that right now. We have Alt-Tab coming up on Friday. Steve and Kyle are going to be hosting that one. And uh, there's also uh, The weekend, which... Yeah, don't miss that. It's not really related to New Egg TV, but it's still coming up. And Game of Thrones, August... No, April 12th. April 12th for Game of Thrones. Important news. Just, just Important stuff. bit of information for you guys. And you've just been yoked. <laughs> <laughs>